I caught up with Colin Ross, the vice principal of a Makar Atikva school in Jerusalem, and I asked him what is Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the Day of Atonement. That means it's well, it is the most holy day in the Jewish calendar. Um, many many Jewish people in Israel and throughout the world fast on Yom Kippur. In fact, many uh, even non-religious, apparently non-religious Jewish people, will fast because it's the the traditional practice for for the nation to go without food and often without drink uh, for 24 hours, 25 hours, in fact, just in case um, in case they get it wrong. So 25 hours um, during that uh, that that day from before sundown to after sundown the following day. Now, your school here is situated next to a very busy road. We can hear the traffic now. Uh, what would this road be like on Yom Kippur? Silence. There's absolutely no traffic travels at all in Israel? Certainly in this area, which is very close to uh, an Orthodox religious Jewish neighborhood, uh, there would be no traffic. Um, there may even, if there was a danger of traffic, and I don't think there is in this particular neighborhood, uh, there'd be vigilante groups of, of young Jewish people on the streets making sure um, in no uncertain manner that cars didn't pass down that street. Now, the Old Testament talks about two goats uh, for Yom Kippur. Are they still used today? And, and what is the, the relevance and the meaning with that? Well, the, um, the book of Leviticus talks about two goats being used at Yom Kippur at the Day of Atonement. One of them would have been a, a sacrifice in the temple, and the other one went into the Holy of Holies with the high priest, who only on that day of the year was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies. And uh, as part of the ceremony for, for Yom Kippur, the high priest symbolically confessed the sins of the nation with his hands upon the head of that goat, and at which point one of the other priests would be taking, would take the goat out of the temple, out of the Holy of Holies, out of the temple, uh, out of the city, into the desert, and the goat would be released um, as uh, a symbol of the cleansing of the sins of the people. Is there still any sacrifice made today? There is no sacrifice because there is no temple. A lot of the um, biblical sacrificial pattern assumed a place to do it, assumed a holy place, a tabernacle and later a temple in which those sacrifices would take place. Since the destruction of the temple in AD 70, there's been no uh, no systematic sacrificial system. And a lot of the rabbinical um, work has been done to, to replace the sacrificial system, to replace those laws which couldn't be fulfilled because there was no temple to fulfill them in um, with a whole lot of domestic duties, uh, domestic commandments that apply to the household and the individual rather than the, the corporate nation. Uh, and so many of the things that are done today in Jewish homes um, bear very little resemblance to the biblical pattern because the biblical pattern can't be fulfilled. Now, as a Messianic believer, what's your prayer for the Jewish people at this time of Yom Kippur? As a Messianic believer, I believe that Yeshua, Jesus, uh, is the fulfillment of the law. And specifically at Yom Kippur, it's so blatantly obvious that Yeshua, who, uh, who went to the cross and took upon himself our sin, is playing the part, has played the part, of that goat that was taken out into the wilderness. And not only, I mean, the, the goat was taken out into the wilderness once a year um, for the sins of that year, presumably. Now Yeshua has, has taken our sins once for all upon the cross. And so the, the cross was, if you like, Yom Kippur throughout history, fulfilling what would what was yet to come in terms of taking away the sins of mankind and also in a real way doing what that goat had done symbolically and prophetically for all the centuries of the mosaic law up to the time of, of jesus so jesus has fulfilled the atonement we speak of him as our, as our atonement 
So we use the same terminology. Uh, and it's so exciting to think that, well, today the Jewish people wish each other in a sort of tentative, hopeful sort of way that there would be that there would be some sort of freedom from sin. There are there is the the kind of greeting, the annual greeting at this time of year. May your names be written in the book of life. We know, as believers in Yeshua, that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. With the with the religious Jews today, it's it's a it's a tentative hope. We know it's already accomplished. And my prayer for for my people is that they would that they would be released into that. They would see it. They would have revelation. This Yom Kippur that actually Yeshua has done it. There is assurance of forgiveness from sin, and it is through Yeshua, through the one who died once and for all to take their sins, our sins, everyone's sins upon himself. The Scouts are an active group of young people, and they also have a Scout troop here in Bejala. I spoke with Salim Zaiden, their troop leader, and I asked him what exactly is the Scouts. Scout first, it's be prepared, and Scout means uh, different things. Scouts help the people, uh, work with the old uh, people, work with the small kids, and uh, always the Boy Scout is like what I I said to you, be prepared, always. So how many children do you have here in Bejala in the troop? In our Boy Scout, the Orthodox Arab Scout is 380 members. Well, so it's very popular. Yeah, I think I think uh, our Boy Scout is the biggest scout in in the world. Really? Yeah. What attracts the children to come here? Why do they come? Why did they come? Because they have many activities. Uh, for example, lectures for religion, uh, Christian education, and scouting journey on food, sports, scout games, training on scout skills, uh, many many things how to cook in, in camping, how to gardening in night in, in, in camping, and music, scout art, many, many things. So it's, it's very practical for people. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, you're the leader. How big is your district? I'm a training leader, Palestinian Boy Scout and Girls Guide in all the Palestine. So the whole of the Palestinian territory, you're the leader? Yeah, the whole of Palestinian. For example, this year I go to south of Palestine in um, in El Farah near uh, Nablus there is a big camp for a leader in Palestine for all Palestine without Gaza mm. you know because the situation is very difficult to go to Gaza and I teach there for uh, leaders that's a very big responsibility yeah I think and uh, I go to Syria too mm. uh, to to give lectures for the Palestinian people outside Palestine if, uh, like in Lebanon, in Syria, and in Jordan. So are Christian principles very important for the Scouts? Yeah, I think, yeah, because when we teach, uh, first, uh, when Badim Baal started to, to work with, with Boy Scouts, he took all the laws from the Bible. Mm. And this is very important for, uh, Scouts is very important for the Christian people, mm. for the, the kids and girls and youth people, uh, youth uh, boys and girls. Mm. So it was built on a biblical foundation. Yeah, yeah. So what special events do you do here in Bejala? Very important in Bejala, first of all in Easter and uh, Christmas. Mm. And there is uh, St. Nicholas, Bejala is the town of St. Nicholas. Right. In 19th December every year, there is a big celebration here in Bejala for St. Nicholas. And they, may, they do uh, a big celebration. And in summer there is a big camp here in Bejala and ma all the people every night they come to share us in the camping and they they help the people uh, they work with the old people boy scout boy scout not music and uh, celebration and to help the people who need mm. so uh, at christmas and easter time do you actually march through the streets and play yeah. musical instruments yeah in in christmas we marching in bethlehem mm -hmm. with all the troops in Bethlehem area and uh, the troops came from outside the area like Jerusalem, Ramallah, Nazareth, uh, Jaffa, uh, many many uh, troops. But in Easter, in uh, uh, Holy Saturday, 
they have a big celebration marching in Bejala uh, and uh, the other two troops in Bejala they share us in this time and in St. Nicholas too and Independence Day we have marching and sometime uh, there is uh, like uh, when, when the uh, president came we marching and uh, we have a big uh, backpipe team mm. uh, about 25 backpipe Mm. In, in, in our Boy Scouts. Mm. So what's it like for you as a leader seeing your troop marching through the streets? Yeah, when, when, when I saw boys and girls marching and uh, playing the drums and bagpipe, I'm, I'm very happy because it's, it's difficult to, to, to teach the boys how to play to the bagpipe mm. or to drums. Maybe he needs one year and one and a half year and something like this. And I am happy, the people happy, the parents happy, the families, all the people in here mm. happy. So because the, the difficulties here are very, very difficult, you're giving the children and the youth a sense of hope. I think in this time, the, because the situation is very bad, situation is political situation, economic situation, it's very bad. Our Boy Scouts, are here in the Boy Scouts, it's a place to the boys and the girls to come to talk with us because no place to go. We can't go to Jerusalem, we can't go to Jericho. For example, next Sunday, we like to go to Nazareth mm. to, to visit the, boy, the Orthodox Boy Scouts in Nazareth. But uh, Israelis uh, don't give us permission to go to, to visit him. Mm. And I don't know what I can do mm. for the boys and the girls because I, I tell him we go to, to Nazareth. Yes. Until now, don't give us uh, permission. Mm. So this place is a bit of a, a sense of hope for the children in a yeah. desperate situation. Yeah, this place is, is give the boys hope. Uh, uh, Sometimes uh, the boys like to... Uh, to talk with some leaders to, to, to tell him what he needs inside because the boys and the girls have many things inside. Uh, maybe he likes to talk with the leaders to tell him what he needs. What we, we do, uh, and sometimes we, give, we to, uh, make for him uh, lectures and counseling and teach him if, he, if any boys or girls poor in some subjects, uh, for example, for uh, math or English or Arabic, the, the leaders teach him here in Boy Scouts mm. without money, free. Mm. So you see this as a ministry? Yeah, yeah. We have, we, it's a big ministry. Yeah. 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 So, so what's your prayer for the children that come here that you're involved with? You know, I, because I graduate from Bible College and I am a Christian and I, I love the boys and the girls I, and I love the, the kids, I, I, I am happy to work with these people. I am happy because God g gave me my heart to work with these people, to teach these people how to live really what the Bible said. Uh, not uh, read the Bible, but live the Bible, mm. what Jesus said. And, and I'm happy with these people. I like to work with him. Every day after my work, I come to the Boy Scout to sit with the leaders, to sit with the boys and girls and talk with him and preach him and ask him to, to, help the, to help the people.